I got it on my phone now. Finally popped up. A suggestion to reduce feedback if everybody reduces their volume to just the level they really need and don't turn it up really loud, turn it up just to the level you need to hear, that will reduce the feedback. Okay. I'm afraid to start pressing buttons. <laughs> uh, Kristen is logging back in once Berlin. she's in is now joining. Kristen, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay, we're good okay. to go. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Uh, given the format of this meeting, I'm just going to identify myself. Uh, Peter McGorry, acting as chairman of the Planning Commission meeting on April 22nd, 2020. It's now just perhaps a short minute or two after 4.30, and I'll call that the meeting to order. Um, I wonder if uh, we could have the secretary for the meeting call the roll. Sure. Mr. Galeo? Here. Mr. Jackson? Here. Mr. McGorry? Here. Mr. Miller? Here. Commissioner Meinzer? Here. Mr. Whalen? And Mr. Zuloff? Here. So I don't know if Mr. Whalen is there and can't answer, but I guess we've got a quorum even without him. Correct. Okay. Um, so uh, moving on to the next matter of business on the agenda would be approval of the minutes from the March 18th, 2020 special meeting. Uh, has have all the commissioners present had a chance to review those minutes? A any comments or objections to any of the content? Any, this is anybody? David Miller. I move they be approved as distributed. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Yeah. Mr. Meinzer? Meinzer second. Yeah. Okay. Uh, moved and seconded. All in favor? Any further Aye. discussion? Okay, all in favor of approving? Aye. 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 Okay, uh, uh, motion passed. Um, the <laughs> next matter of business is actually an adjudication hearing, which I'm understanding is a public hearing uh, for uh, participants to speak at. And anybody who is choosing to speak uh, at the meeting, I believe, has to be sworn in. Now, I'm not sure how we're going to handle that. Did he... Mr. Uh, Amos, you there somewhere? Uh, can you hear me? Uh, whoever speaks, yeah. I... Uh, yeah, this is Albert. Uh, Albert Haddad of Ellis Sign Company representing uh, Cedar Point on this project. I just wanted okay. to uh, make sure you could hear me and understand that you're asking for being sworn in. Yep. Mr. Um, Chairman, uh, this is Trevor Hayberger speaking. Yes. Um, wh why don't I start with, swear uh, Tom, are you handling this one? Yes. So why don't I start with uh, swearing in staff, and then when we go to comments, I'll swear each person as, as they come up. Does that sound like a plan? That sounds sounds like a plan. Go ahead. Uh, so, Mr. Horseman, do you swear to tr the truth, all truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. So you're sworn in. Um, so it's back to you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Um, if if uh, Mr. Horseman, I guess you're going to present on behalf of staff. Could you uh, fill us in on this application? 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is a application for a conditional use permit for a digital message board sign uh, at the corner of Cleveland Road and Cedar Point Drive. Um, just to note some of the context, um, the full sign will need a building permit from the building division. Uh, the sign has also received uh, two different variances already uh, last month related to its setback and related to it being an off-premise sign. Um, so the hearing today is not about the um, the sign or the placement, it's strictly about the digital message board um, part. Uh, this, uh, you can move to the next slide for me, please. Uh, this is the current sign that is existing um, at the corner, as many of you are familiar with, and Cedar Point is planning on replacing the sign um, with a new sign. Um, as you can see here, here's a rendering of what it will look like. And the digital message board section of it is um, the black part, as you can see there. Um, if you go to the next slide, uh, this will give you the dimensions of the entirety of the sign. The digital message board portion is 94.8 uh, square feet in size, um, and it's double sided, so it would be facing both east and west. Um, if you can move to the next slide for me. Uh, so, as I mentioned, the Board of Zoning Appeals has approved the variances. Um, Staff did receive comment from the divisions of building, engineering, police, and fire, um, and no division expressed any concern with this proposal. Um, staff did recommend um, three conditions were this to be approved by the Planning Commission. These are consistent with conditions that have been placed on these before, including the Cedar Point Indoor Sports Center. Uh, minimum display time of 10 seconds, um, brightness shall not impose hazard to pedestrian or vehicular traffic, um, nor a nuisance to surrounding properties. Um, no animations, videos, or illumination of flashing lights. Um, and these were communicated to the applicant, um, who, as mentioned, was on the call and I'm sure could answer um, more specific questions as to the sign, um, but staff recommends approval and I'll be happy to answer any questions from the staff's perspective. Thank you. Um, I know that Mr. Haddad wishes to speak. I don't know about anybody else, but um, Mr. Hayberger, do you want to swear uh, Mr. Haddad in? Sure, I can do that now. OK. Are you there? I am, sorry, thank you. Go ahead. All righty. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. All right, thank you. Uh, Mr. Haddad, this is Pete McGorry, chairman of the meeting. Go ahead and say what you'd like to say. Sure, I just wanted to add to what uh, uh, Mr. Horsman had said and, and, and mentioned that I did share the uh, recommendations and conditions with the uh, uh, contact at Cedar Point, uh, Tom Clark, the GM there, Tom, Tom's in marketing, the GM, as, as well as Brian Nicely in the planning group. Um, I, think, I don't think there's any questions there, and they understand, you know, what the guidelines are for use of the sign. Um, like other signs in the area, you know, this type of sign just offers a little bit more of a dynamic way to communicate with the public. Uh, obviously, a lot of things are changing, and, 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 and as you can see from the pictures, that there's going to be some changes at the corner there. But, but again, primarily wanted to offer any, I wanted to clarify that I have shared the requirements um, with the group and also just um, offer or answer any questions you might have about it. Um, I would ask staff if they, have there been any uh, written negative comments or is anybody else here today or somehow connected to speak either in favor or against? Uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, uh, we have not received any emailed comments. Um, we did invite the public to use the call-in number um, on the public notice that we sent to surrounding property owners. Um, so if anyone um, has called in, they may be here, but we did not receive any written comments before the uh, commencing of the start of the meeting. Okay. And as far as we know, nobody's on board here on this meeting right now to say anything from the public. Okay. Um, do, do any of uh, the commissioners have a question or comment? Uh, anybody care to make a motion? Mr. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Motion David, to I'll make a motion that it be approved subject to staff conditions. 
Could Pardon I make me. a further suggestion that um, that in the application, it's been agreed that the electronic sign just north of First Street is going to be removed. I'm wondering if we could add that as a further condition. It's it's being volunt a voluntary uh, a voluntary offer already. Um, we could either just leave it at that or make it a further condition of the, the recommendation for approval. Is, is that the motion Mr. Miller's making or do we need to, uh, we, we point, uh, just a point of order, we haven't even seconded the motion, so Miller, Miller can still add that to his motion. If he cares well, to. I, I'm fine with that in it. I, I could go either way on the matter, but uh, just to clarify, I will add that fourth condition to the motion, the three conditions recommended by staff plus the fourth condition being uh, what had been offered, the removal of that other sign. Okay. Um, Zulof is there a second? seconds the motion. Uh, I'm sorry, who seconded it? Mike Zulhoff seconds the motion. Okay. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Um, could we, uh, any, any further comments? Any discussion? Okay, hearing none, I guess we'll uh, call the roll or, or vote on it. Mr. Galea? Yes. Mr. Jackson? Yes. Mr. McGorry? Yes, on the motion. Mr. Miller? Yes. Commissioner Meinzer? Yes. Uh, Mr. Zuloff? Yes. Okay, um, it appears to be unanimous for everyone present. So the the application is approved. Um, Hello? I guess this has a recommendation to the city commission, correct? Uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, this is Tom from staff. Uh, no, this is a uh, final approval uh, okay. for the board. It would just now need approval from the division of building to be constructed. Okay. I, okay. I, I can't be done. I'm on another call. Okay, goodbye. Okay, um, next order of business is uh, a site plan application submitted by Mr. John Hancock on behalf of Cedar Point Park LLC and Magnum Management Corporation for alterations to the drive and parking area located at one Cedar Point Drive. Um, just in the interest of full disclosure, I want to put on the record that I live in the Cedar Point Cove area. I'm a member of both the Cedar Point Property Owners Association and the Cedar Cove had that. Association. Is now exiting. Um, and I also own a, a couple of Cedar Point uh, fair shares. Now, none of that is going to impact my vote on any of this, but I thought I would just disclose that. So, um, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, this is uh, Joe Galea speaking. Um, and uh, to add to your uh, disclosure, I would like to um, recuse myself from, from consideration of this uh, particular application um, for the reason being uh, to avoid any appearance of um, conflict in the matter. Uh, one of the uh, adjacent neighbors is uh, a partner at the law firm where I am employed. And um, just to avoid any appearance that um, my feelings or comments might be swayed by that fact. Uh, I will be recusing myself from this particular application. I did consult with the law director uh, who agreed that that was the appropriate path to take. So I will not be uh, participating in the discussion or the vote on this matter. Okay, so noted. Uh, anybody else have any further comments before we move forward? Hey, I'm a long time pass holder, but hopefully that won't influence me. Okay, maybe they'll give you another one, but anyway. Um, all right, uh, I, I wonder if staff uh, staff could educate us a little bit on this application. Uh, thank you, Chairman. The, as you mentioned, this is for a site plan application for Cedar Point parking and the drive area at one Cedar Point Drive. Um, the applicant is proposing to alter the alignment an entry into Cedar Point Amusement Park, as well as adding additional parking spaces. The existing so zoning is predominantly 
P for auto parking, where they do intend to use for parking. Um, it doesn't encounter some R-175 zoning where they are realigning the road. Um, the parking lot is adjacent to single family residential as well as commercial amusement districts. The applicant has been working with our police and fire with this plan as far back as last fall. Uh, planning and engineering staff has discussed these plans with the applicants since uh, December of 2019. Staff believes that these changes should ease congestion on the busiest days of the year by allowing greater intake capacity and reducing conflict points. The image to the right shows how the new design allows visitors to drive immediately to spaces from the gate, reducing cross traffic conflicts. Uh, the new gate system is also designed to provide additional wayfinding and ease of use with some equipment to speed up entry into the parking area. Uh, the, the applicant is proposing to realign the private road uh, and drive by reducing the angle of the drive uh, to provide a safer turning radius. These changes do add additional landscaping, post and rail fencing, and some roadway lighting. Staff uh, will note that this realignment must be permanent through a permanent easement or replatting of the parcels. Uh, most of Cedar Point Road is currently a separate parcel and staff believes that to ensure residents along Cedar Point Road are able to maintain access, the realignment must be memorialized in one of the aforementioned ways or a similar method. Staff is also aware that, the app, that while the applicant does show landscaping locations, a more detailed landscaping plan is desired for staff approval. Uh, in conclusion, planning staff recommends approval of the proposed site plan for one Cedar Point Drive with the following conditions. The applicant provides for staff approval a revised landscaping plan that shows types and locations of plantings as well as types, locations, and specifications of the fencing that's to be installed. The uh, number two, the applicant provides for staff approval lighting cut sheets for of any proposed new lighting. Uh, we did get these today, and I believe they were passed uh, along to the uh, commissioners, but we did ask for further clarification on what was sent. Uh, three, the applicant creates a permanent easement or replay, replat as necessary to designate the private road and drive. After recording, a copy shall be submitted to staff for filing. And we do request a fourth condition today that the applicant limits overflow parking to adjacent parcels not zoned P auto parking to no more than 12 days a year. Um, and I know the applicant is on the um, call with us if they have further comments uh, and I'm glad to answer any further questions. Uh, thank you. Um, so is, is uh, anyone here to speak for the applicant? John Hancock, if uh, anyone has any questions. Um, John, Pete McGorry. Um, now, what the staff mentioned about an easement to residents for the, I guess I would call it the, the new perimeter road um, or new, new platting or something, um, is Cedar Point on board with that? Uh, yes. This would be a permanent easement or a uh, planning of the new roadway alignment uh, with the idea that it would protect the rights of all the Cedar Point Chausse residents in this realignment. The uh, road as it is now is uh, a private road that was platted many, many years ago. Uh, and that will actually remain in place as a private right of way, but this would be additional uh, platted right of way to provide access from the chasse into the new perimeter so the, or connector connector road. That's being the part built. of the existing chasse that's not being impacted right this minute is with construction would just remain as is. If a if a owner is Lake to Bay, then there's an easement to Cedar Point to cross that property. It's the new roadway that somehow would be an easement would be granted to the existing property owners or, yes, or it would probably, probably take the form of more form of a dedication of, of okay. rights consistent with the uh, existing rights of all the property owners 
Okay. Okay. Um, anybody have any questions of Mr. Hancock? M Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure where this, this is going to wind up in the process because, this, of course, it's not a, a adjudication hearing. But I, I know there were some comments uh, or questions earlier uh, uh, about process uh, and uh, the process of, of, of approval and some questions. So that may come up, and I, I think you. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure how it's going to come up, but I, I know there are questions about. Uh, the process of approval and uh, as I know that we're asked being asked to approve something here that's been largely completed. I, I understand your comment and um, I'm I'm thinking well, that Mrs. More, Murray. More of a question of, 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 of you know is, is this I, I'm not I'm not sure uh, uh, the discussion of the process generally might not be in order and relevant to this particular case uh however specific to the case i think uh, you know it would be in order i don't have any questions i i kind of know what the process was uh but anyway i just wanted to i'm not sure where this is going to fit in here if at, if at all but i think we might have a, a visitor in the meeting who uh has questions about the uh, application too. Yeah, I, I, if I can paraphrase what I think you're saying is that it seems that the project's pretty close to being done or let, let, even let's call it half done or three quarters done and now we're hearing th about the application and even if the application seems to be appropriate in all matters except timing, do we do anything about the the timing? I I don't know I don't know the answer to that question. I think the the intent here is probably good to expedite Cedar Point visitors into the park and remove congestion. I I don't know. I I, I was amazed at seeing how this was done. That anybody could think about this as an entire concept. I don't know that it's going to solve the total problem, but it's probably going to be better than it was. So um, again, I guess I'm back to, does anybody have any questions for Mr. Hancock at this point? For you, Mr. Chairman, I have a couple of questions. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Miller. Um, John David Miller here. Um, first, assuming that the new road is platted, Who's responsible for maintaining the road, especially snow plowing and such? Is that the the association or is that a city of Sandusky street? No, no it's a, it'd still be a private road owned by Cedar Point. Okay. They'd be responsible then, for maintenance. Then the second question, um, in this whole um, plan, is there additional paving additional um i don't know if acreage or or how it'd be measured but additional property that paved and if so what becomes of the storm runoff from additional paving as a result of this project all right there is additional area being paved uh, for the connector road between the causeway and the chasse and the, uh, there is some additional parking provided in this plan as well. The connector road was moved more toward the bay to um, allow an expansion of the main parking area, as well as allow for uh, added capacity at the Chasse toll booths and at the main toll booths and the toll booths for the resort drive going to the back of the park. So what becomes storm water, Yes. Stormwater runoff is all being handled within the project. And there's a SWIP plan, which has been reviewed, I believe, and approved by engineering that was submitted with the construction plans. Can you tell, tell me what how that water is directed, what becomes of it? Well, it, it basically 
the entire parking lot has always run uh, directly to the bay or the east bay and uh, with some control and water quality measures all the new paved areas will run that same way so you're saying there are additional water quality controls that are incorporated with this or or not that's correct there are can you outline that for me at all well the project incorporates uh, a number of median strips between paved areas with water flow directed to those median strips and it is both uh, retained and uh, handled for quality before any final discharge. Will this have any impact on the previously paved stuff or is this uh, affect only the newly paved stuff? It will have an impact on the previously paved areas also. We've recontoured some of the uh, previously paved areas and introduced some controls into that where we could uh, as part of this project. So would I be correct in concluding that the uh, net result of this change would be to improve water quality from the whole site overall, or is that not really uh, fair uh, to yes, say? Yes, sir, it, 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 it does improve water quality overall yes sir thank you very much um john this is pete mcgory just a question on when you're talking about um i don't think you use the word filter but is there some sort of a filter that's filtering this or or just slowing the flow well it, it slows the flow in terms of slowing the initial discharge there's some epa requirements on that and um, it does incorporate um, filter strips or grass strips, which um, you know, which provide additional water quality. Okay, so it actually flows over the ground once it gets closer to the bay, and the grass is a filter. Yes. Okay. Um, I have no further questions. Any anybody else with questions? Um, if if none, is there is there anybody else to speak in favor Mr. of the Mr. Mr. Chairman? I I, uh, um, I have a question. I'm not, I'm really not seeing much detail in the in the in the packet. Was there did did Mr. Volt say that there was additional stuff sent or? Uh, I'm sorry, additional what? Was there additional material uh, oh. sent or? Through you, Mr. Chairman, to Mr. Zuloff, we did send uh, additional cut lighting cut sheets today um, that sh showed what um, lighting fixtures were going to be installed. Um, they we did ask for further clarification regarding those. I have seen no such. Uh, what time were those sent? I did I did receive something around noon, but oh. This was later in the day. It was at, uh, oh yeah, about a, at 2.51 I received something. I haven't had a chance to see it yet. Correct, also, yes. So it didn't show up on my filter for planning because it doesn't have the word planning in it. Um, didn't even know it was here. Um, okay, Is, is what's that issue about? What, 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 what was the matter? Uh, uh, that was addressed in that additional communication. Um, through you, Mr. Chairman, we we're just trying to make sure that the fixtures were uh, as dark sky friendly as we could be. Um, they do appear to be that way, very similar to the Cedar Point outdoor or the indoor good. sports center lighting. Um, yeah, I, I, I very think I, good. It, it's good to know. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to guess that any uh, designer these days that knows what they're doing is using cutoff fixtures uh, on the assumption that they're illegal in most places to not do so. Um, I think we, uh, I don't know if we've, uh, hopefully we'll, we'll get to addressing that in our ordinance uh, again soon, but um, okay. Um, okay, uh, any other questions? I, I, didn't, I didn't, yeah, I didn't really understand the answer uh, 
it seems like we it took a while to get to the answer of, of what was becoming a stormwater and it was still wasn't clear to me is there any on-site detention or is it just filter strips or um is if, if there's detention is it dry swales because this detail isn't isn't uh apparent in the uh uh, uh in the information I received in the packet, the dry swales, what you know, wet wet detention, dry detention. What do we have here? Can, can, can you answer that, Mr. Mr. Hall, or or would you like the applicant to answer it? Uh, I do not believe the what we received have that level of detail, but I believe the applicant could answer that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. This is John Hancock. Um, the all the detention is provided for within median areas uh, with what you term as dry swales. Okay. And there's one one small ponding area near the Chasse toll booths, which is a, a dry area as well. Um, everything's being handled without incorporating any sort of a large wet or dry detention basin. It's It's being distributed Stormwater is being distributed over uh, many, many different areas. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, is there anybody else that wants to speak on behalf of the applicant? Okay. I would like to, Mr. McGorry. This is Martha Murray. Yes, I was going to ask. I didn't know if you were in, in on behalf of the applicant. I was going to ask, but, oh, but no, you're, you're on now. So. I'm not on behalf of myself. Yeah, that Sorry. sure. Okay. Um, Go ahead. Uh, if there's somebody else, I'll wait. No. Well, unless there's somebody else for the app speaking on behalf of the applicant, and I haven't heard that there is, but. So I was going to move on then to at least you and then anybody else that cared to make a comment uh, other than the applicant staff or the commission members. So, uh, Ms. Murray, why don't you go ahead? Um, thank you, Mr. McGorry. Many of you received the, the note that I wrote, but I wanted to read it um, for the record. Um, sure. So for, for those of you who probably can't see me, so I'm just gonna kind of read this. My name is Martha Murray and I live at 2035 Cedar Point Road and I own the property at 2107 um, Cedar Point Road, which is next to one of the properties affected by the site review application before the San Sandusky Planning Commission today. First, I will say that I love Cedar Point. I love hearing the roller coasters in the summer and very much appreciate their involvement in my city. I also love Sandusky as I have lived here most of my life and on the same road. I have dedicated much of my adult life to the betterment of the different sectors of our community. I will also say that both Cedar Point, namely Mr. McClure, and the City Planning Department, namely Mr. Volz and Ms. Byington, have been very willing to discuss the plans for this project me, with me for the last four months. These, these discussions led me on a journey in which I have learned about zoning and easements, about plats, the very beginning of Cedar Point, and the Wyandotte Indians and subdivisions that went nowhere, and about people such as George Beckling and George Roos that created the Cedar Point Amusement Park that we know and love. In some of the research, I even found that my father, a local attorney, had written a memorandum for the Cedar Point property owners about the last time Cedar Point parking lot was increased in size and the zoning was changed and the traffic flow for residents was altered. Today, however, I have asked to address the Planning Commission because I am concerned about the process that occurred preceding this application for site plan approval for parking and drive alterations. I am concerned because the project was over 80% complete, my estimation, before the site approval was requested. I'm concerned because four of the conditions given for approval all affect the property in which I live in some way. I do not profess to know or understand zoning. However, when I read the zoning ordinances, I see that some protect residential districts as the one I live in and others protect business districts and to encourage development. There of course is where many conflicts lie. The approval of site plans with off street parking has many requirements that are stated in the zoning ordinance and in the application for the site plan approval as well. The filing deadline is also listed in the application and it's four weeks prior to the planning commission meeting. 
The site preparation on this project began in December with cutting down of many years old trees. I first met with Mr. McClure in late December, at which time he kindly shared Cedar Point's preliminary plans. I sent a few emails in January asking several questions and requests to which he answered fairly, but not always in the affirmative. At that time, concerned that there would be a zoning change on residential property, I contacted Mr. Volz in the planning department and asked if they were aware Cedar Point had started on their project and whether they were requesting rezoning. In the next few weeks, I learned that Cedar Point did not have finalized plans, but they had altered the location of the access road some, which allayed some of my concerns. There was much back and forth about the easements on Cedar Point Road and therefore the reason for the condition on this application, that Cedar Point either put a similar easement on the new access road, at least in part, and or replace the parcel on which the road now sits. I don't really know why this hasn't been done. On February 21st, first, before Cedar Point announced the improved traffic flow, uh, still without approval, I met in person with Mr. McClure and Mr. Dangler and talked about the temporary parking they wanted, landscaping, fencing, and lighting. They were very kind to agree with me on the fencing in particular. However, now I understand, well, I just heard today they have been turned in, but I, I didn't have a chance to see them, of course. At this point, I assumed every one would get things together and at least be present at the March Planning Me Commission meeting. However, I finally heard on March 24th that plans had been received for site plan approval. I learned a week later that no landscaping plan or lighting plan had been included. We all want to be good neighbors and community partners. It is, however, hard to understand a project that has been ongoing since at least January, now just seeking site, site approval without many of the requirements that are required by the application. In conversations, and emails with Cedar Point, I understand that at the time there was a big time crunch. I also understand in my conversations with the planning department that they requested documents for at least six weeks before they were submitted. Neither of these situations are really acceptable. Timelines are important, development is important. In the future, I hope everyone involved can do it better for the citizens of Sandusky. In addition, because this has been central to the discussion about temporary parking and what temporary means, as well as how it exists on, res on a residentially zoned lot. I would like to suggest that the planning department look at its zoning ordinances for parking and create a category for temporary parking. Thank you for listening. Uh, thank you, okay. Ms. Murray. Um, yes. Again, this is Pete McGorry. I have a question for you, Ms. Murray. Um, given what you now know and the fact that this is a, a request being submitted after the project is pretty well down the road already. Um, do, and knowing what you do know, do you have a personal feeling that this will work for you or are you objecting to approval? I'm not objecting to approval. I mean, the world is turned upside down for the city and for Cedar Point. So sure. that would not be right. It, you know, what are they going to, they can't do anything. They have a beautiful cement, ro cement road already. I right. would just like to make I would just like to make sure that the conditions are met with the landscaping and the lighting and that they really consider what they mean by temporary when they ask for temporary parking. Yeah. Um, I didn't I, I wasn't trying to put you on the spot. I just was oh, uh, you did I appreciate but that's everything okay. you said. Yeah, I'm I'm not I'm not recommend no, I can't recommend anything. I just oh. wanted to have a chance to say something, that's all. No, and I and I I'm glad you did. I'm glad you did. Um, it, are there any other comments from anybody either in favor or, or f on behalf of the applicant or against the application? Mr. Chairman, mine, it's Meiser. Yes. Uh, Mr. Meiser. I have a question for, for, for Mr. Bolts. Uh, what's, what's the, uh, the background on the 12 days a year for, uh, the parking and, uh, and where is this parking at? Actually, I, I Mr. Chairman, that. just a point of order. Are we done with audience participation? Are we back to the, ta the table? Is that what we're doing now? Or uh, I, I didn't, I couldn't see anybody in, in an audience, okay, but I, I didn't you. hear anybody else. So, so I, I'm fine with being back to the table. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, through you, Mr. Ahead, Mr. Chairman, to uh, uh, Commissioner Meiser, um, the on the screen right now, uh, hopefully you'll see the the two parcels 
that have historically been utilized. Um, they're kind of in a light gray. Um, they've been historically utilized by Cedar Point for his uh, overflow parking. Um, and in conversations, uh, we believe that it, was, it occurred no more than 12 times per year. Uh, so we, we were just uh, kind of historical background. And um, Angie uh, Byington may have a little more information on that, but that's where that comes from. Okay, thank, thank you, Mr. through you, Mr. Chairman. Um, is this, uh, this is still a grass, this used to be Dr. Baxter's home, correctly, or yard, and is this still grass or parking in the grass at this property? Um, I drive by there every day. Uh, it's my understanding that what used to be Dr. Baxter's property was split in half between Mrs. Murray and her husband taking the west half of the Baxter lot and Cedar Point buying the east half of I'm sorry, I have that reversed. Yeah. The, uh, Cedar Point buying the west half. But I think there is also a, a more of a gravel lot that is just inside this new curve that was not part of Baxter's property. So I think Cedar Point has owned that lot for a long time right in this very corner. But they also now own some other property further to the east, which used to be half of the Baxter lot. That's my understanding. Um, now, I, now, I have a question for staff, and this goes along with Ms. Murray's uh, questions or comments. Um, so there's, there's no zoning change application, correct? Uh, this is not a zoning change application. Okay, correct. so and and to to follow up on Mr. Meinzer's question, so this this overflow parking that's going to go into what's not really a paved lot is going to be limited to 12 days a year, and that's actually on residential zoning. Is that correct? That is, is correct. Yes. Okay. Okay, so just to be clear, I'm not making that as a complaint or a negative. I just, and, and I think that goes along with uh, Ms. Murray's questions or comments about the city kind of clearing up what does temporary parking mean, overflow parking, things like that. So, um, are there any more comments from the the table? Mr. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Mine's are both same, yeah. Okay. Are, are, you, are, you, are you done, Mike, or? I, I'd like to add, if, if Mrs. Murray's still on, I'd like to ask if this is where the uh, landscape lighting would be along. So they own the property to the east, because that's where she's requesting that landscape lighting uh, planning goes into effect along that line there. If, you, if I'm allowed to answer, I can answer, or do you want Greg to answer? Uh, I'd like to ask Mrs. Murray, actually. OK, so the the landscaping in particular that we're, inter we're concerned about is along the road itself, because the road is much closer to our house, which is not on the property that I'm talking I own that I'm talking about, um, but it is still closer to the house. So we just want a berm or we're just really I mean, I've talked to Cedar Point about this, a berm, you know, to, to block the, the um, tire noise. That's as well as fencing. And I've also talked to them about fencing. They've been very accommodating, although um, I haven't seen the plans, but I, I, I trust that they'll do what they said. Um, but that is our concern. The um, lighting, they did remove one light post or the bottom, the footer of it that I requested they removed because it was not where it should have been. Um, but they can put it. They can put a light on a telephone pole, and I think that'll be fine. It's right at the curve, so they obviously need something. Um, so there are other light posts that have already are already in place. Also, I mean the posts aren't there, but the bases are there. So it's just the fact that the plans weren't turned in when they should have been turned in. That, and I think the, I think the landscaping will be fine. I think they'll probably put trees and things someday. Um, it doesn't have to be this year, uh, but. It's more the blocking of the noise that concerns us, tire noise. Thank you. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Yes, it does. Thank you. Thank Mr. you. Chairman. 
Yes, Mr. Zola. Uh, if I could get clarification from Ms. Murray, you said something about a, a, a lamp that, or a fixture or a pole that wasn't where it should have been. What is, could, could you clarify what you mean by that? So it, it was, um, well, it wasn't, not that it was where it was, shouldn't have been, but I had asked if there would be any permanent lighting on the property. On the, so there's, there's actually two lots we're talking about. The temporary parking is on the far lot. The, the, um, that is all, it is a, it's all owned by Cedar Point, but they had put one at the end on the on the property right next to us, which would have you know been a big tall light and would have shined right into the house. So I just saw the stake and I said, you know, that's all. I they were very kind, very responsive. So the stake was. Not on. Was Mar I'm, I'm yeah, still not it understanding. Was on, okay, well, I I can't draw it for you because I'm not there. But so there's my property is at 2107, and then Cedar Point's property or the first Baxter lot that used to be Baxter's is 2111, and at the corner of that property is an access road to the back. They had put a light, they were going to put a big tall light post on the inside of that roadway. If you see, you probably can see it on your drawings that you have in front of you. And I had been told twice by Cedar Point that there would be no permanent lighting on that property. So they, I asked them about that. This is on so property, uh, 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 this, is on, this is on the residential lot yes. that they yes. own, yes. but that yes. they had said they were not putting it on there and then. Correct. A stake. It's probably it was. It's, okay. Thank you. I, I just want to understand what you know. It, uh, it's most likely on the lighting plan that they have turned in, or not on it. Right. I, I can address that. This is John Hancock. Sure. There, there is a, a lighting standard added uh, as you proceed off the chasse, going into the curve, the new curve alignment. Um, to the park, and that's necessary to get some illumination at that curve for safety purposes. Uh, the lighting is directed toward the roadway, and it's not intended to be any sort of area lighting for the uh, overflow parking area that was discussed. The um, overflow parking area will remain as, as turf and when it's necessary to be used, Cedar Point has always used portable light plants for a uh, short period of time to illuminate that area for safety. Thank you, Mr. Hancock. Uh, any further questions or comments from the table? Mr. Chairman? Yes. Um, Mr. Zula. I'm. Uh, I'll, I'll be voting in favor of the plan. I think that it's uh, necessary. I think, though, that this illustrates this has been a repeated problem that we've been unwilling to enforce the process of uh, of, of uh, approval. The, the loss is that sometimes issues don't get teased out until it's too late to do anything about it. It's, it's frustrating enough when uh, when you've got contracts let and you know plans complete and we're asked to approve but when when the project's already done and sometimes there are assumptions that this board would not allow things that might be allowed or uh or or actually raise some concerns that, that might even reduce the cost or make it a better project we have had cases where applicants have saved a lot of money not having to do things they thought they had to do um so uh, I, I think I don't know what we do about this. We're, we're, we're a community that doesn't want to get in the way of, of, of business or success. Um, but I, I also, uh, uh, you know, know that this process can have value and not just be an impediment. Uh, I'm sure it seems that way to, you know, a designer or a, uh, a business once in a while. Uh, but on on balance, when it's done well, it, it can add a little value and prevent some uh, some bad things from happening. So, I, I'm, and I'm not talking as much to the specific uh, uh, application as as much as 
here we go again, you know, in the position of, of either, you know, rubber stamping a project or, uh, or, or getting in the way. Uh, Mr. Zuloff, I appreciate your comments and I, I'm inclined to agree with them. I think at this point, as I assess this, it's, could this, could this have, get the timeline, could the project itself have been in, designed any better? I don't know. I'm just amazed at the scope of this project. It's not like a straight road through a field. Um, they're trying to maximize the space. I agree with you. I hate to rubber stamp things after the fact. Um, and but that's our really only choice is to approve it at this point or or say you didn't follow the rules quite right. And um, I, I I agree with you. I wish it were, had been done differently, but we're here today to to address the application. Um, that's my, my last comment. Any other further comments or observations? Mr. Chairman? Yes, Mr. Meinzer. Um, there's always been a question in my mind, uh, who was the dog and who was the tail? Which is the tail? I mean, I think this uh, last, this virus has proven to us in the economy who the dog really is in this area. Um, everything's around Cedar Point, recreation, entertainment. Uh, and they've really been a lot better corporate citizens as of late. And if anybody's listening, I mean, I know John, Mr. Hancock, and uh, I would encourage any Cedar Point uh, folks to uh, just try to keep planning and engineering and our staff uh, it, 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 in your thoughts and try to work with them. I know things can slow down these committees, so I just like to see uh, not this come up with Mrs. Murray, all these concerns at the last minute after all this work is done. It's just like you you guys have said. So I, I'm going to back this as well with the conditions listed. And I'd, I'd like, actually like to add the uh, landscape lighting thing in there some way if we can. That's all I have to say as well. OK, thank you, Mr. Meister. Does anybody care to make a motion? Mr. Mr. Chairman, if I could add one more uh, yes. comment, if nobody else has one. Um, you know, it's an interesting analogy of uh, which ends the dog and which ends the tail. Right. I, I agree. We're, 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 what we're learning is just how crucial the, uh, the, the Cedar Point is to the economy of this area, although uh, lots of other uh, uh, businesses are, are, are uh, uh, we're feeling their pain uh, as, as well. But it is Earth Day today, and, and uh, if you want to know who's really in charge, uh, you, call it, you can call it Mother Nature, you call it God, but uh, we can get pretty arrogant as humans once in a while and then and get slapped down. Uh, Lake Erie is, uh, is, is, is teaching us a lesson or two about, uh, about Mother Nature's will, and, uh, uh, and, uh, but, but that's, that's nothing compared to uh, uh, the impact we're feeling. And, um, you know, pandemics... Uh, can be even worse than this. So uh, theoretically, so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm both grateful and uh, and humbled. And, and I think we, we do well to be reminded that we, we have to be uh, um, uh, very deliberative in everything we do in the long haul and realize that uh, we can't be arrogant. We're not always in charge. Here, here. I agree with you. Um, so again, does anybody care to make a motion? I make a motion that staff approve with the con, uh, with the uh, staff conditions. Staff conditions. Uh, and is that subject also to staff approval of lighting? Uh, I don't know who who recommended that the. Uh, uh, that uh, that be approved. I didn't hear that anybody recommended that that be put on there. I don't I don't know that they have approved it yet. It just came in this late this afternoon. Oh, OK. All right. I, mean, I guess my, I, I guess my question is, do we treat this as a as an incomplete application or do we accept the application for the construction part of it and make it subject to staff? A, a, additional staff approval on the lighting. 
and landscaping. And, well, and that's the hard, way. It's going, to, it's going to be it's going to be hard to approve it because nobody's actually said what type of lighting they're 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 proposing. It, it, well, it, it we, we, actually, we, we, Mr. Mr. Chairman, we we do yeah. have that. The trouble is, I'm, I'm not sure most of have have seen it. I I've only looked at it briefly. I'd I'd, I'd feel better uh, if it got some additional reviews. So, um, Mr. Jackson, if 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 uh, if you uh, uh, added additional review by the staff, I would be satisfied by that. I think the staff understands the concerns. Um, other, otherwise, I would be moving for an amendment uh, to to to, uh, to the motion to the uh, the same. We don't even have a second yet, so um, I, I guess it's not out of order to be talking about this. Um, I would go along with that. The conditions of the staff be added. So staff approval, staff approval on lighting and landscaping. Yes. Okay. Second. Okay. We have moved and seconded. Um, any further discussion? Hearing none, I guess we'll uh, vote or ca call the roll on vote on the motion. <laughs> Kristen, you with us? Mr. Galea. Uh, he's he's going to abstain. Okay. Uh, Mr. Jackson? Yes. Mr. McGorry? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mr. Minder? Yes. And Mr. Zuloff? Yes. Uh, application has been approved. Um, do we have any other new business that's not on the agenda? Yes, yes, not. Um, it, do we have any old business to bring up? Okay, hearing none. Uh, does anybody care to move that the meeting be adjourned? I'll move it be adjourned, David Miller. Okay, and second? I'll second it, Jim Jackson. Okay, okay Jim. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Okay. Aye. Okay, uh, meeting is adjourned. All right.